So nearby, Brad and Nisha, are you ready to talk about Russell Crowe's Gladiator? Before that, no, it's not Russell Crowe's Gladiator, it's Ridley Scott's, but Russell Crowe is the Gladiator. You know what, that'll be do fact. You'll open your beer, let's go. Also, new shirt. So yeah, limited run merch. Get this, the Sage of Secrets. It kicks ass. We'll talk about it at the end of the video. But first, Gladiator. Gladiator is a film which is roughly based on a true story of a gladiator who gets pissed off when they're betrayed and then goes to stab the emperor in the face. Sounds like a laugh. And not every detail of the story is entirely historically accurate, but there is some stuff in the film that was removed that was historically accurate, but they took it out because people didn't think it was. For example, there was going to be a plot point in the film where Russell Crowe starts doing celebrity-style endorsements to make more money what? as a gladiator, which is a thing gladiators used to do. <laughs> gladiators used to do that, like they would advertise products in the gladiatorial arena, like so they could like get money and favor from like, you know, rich people in the audience. When test audience are like, well, that's not realistic. It's like, well, it literally is. Like they used to do that. That doesn't sound real. No, it doesn't, does it? And that's why they had to cut it out because people watching like, it's good, but that bit where Russell Crowe was like, starts selling like soap isn't realistic. It's like, no, but gladiators used to do that. I want to fight, but I want to look good doing it. That's why I use Gillette. <laughs> <laughs> the best a man can get. And that's the thing, they, and there's been a couple of examples of that in film that always crack me up. The one I always bring up is um, Cloverfield um, in the trailer where like, the Statue of Liberty's head gets knocked off to that great shot and it lands in the street. A bunch of whiny men online are like, well, that statue's too small. The actual Statue of Liberty is way bigger than that. And the director went, well, actually, it's not because we got the exact measurements of the Statue of Liberty's head for that CGI model, but people in their head think that their head is bigger, so we made it like 20% bigger in the final film. And those people were very happy that we made that change because it's more realistic. And it's only more realistic to their own expectations. And you know, like bring it back to Gladiator. Um, you know, it was, it was pretty realistic. Like you know, all things considered, like widely considered one of the greatest films ever made. It still holds up to this day, except for some of those awkward um, uh, mistakes in the filmmaking. Like a couple of the, the like the barbarian hordes are wearing watchers. There's porta potties in the background. You can see a car in one scene. There's a, the fa there's the pillow under Russell Crowe's head when he's dying at the end. <laughs> Wait, what? No, uh, so, no, sorry. Uh, Joe Wahey feet's on the floor. Yeah. You can see a pillow under his head in the sand. <laughs> good like very well received and was inspired by a single painting which painting is this well i have the name of the painting and the artist here so it was a painting by a guy called jean leon jerome which i hope i'm pronouncing correctly a french artist if you couldn't tell and it's called policier verso which uh, depicts something that quite literally translates to the turning of the thumb and we all know what this you can picture it in your head can't you you can picture <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking like from upright to like. I'm just thinking thumbs up, yeah. thumbs down. But, like, you know, in your head, you can you can picture it right. You can picture the baying crowd, like probably from Gladiator, like, that visual of Gladiator, the crowd like kill, 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 kill. Oh yeah, yeah. So this video actually gives an opportunity to correct a pretty popular misconception that Gladiator itself um, inadvertently helped popularize because. Uh, the story goes that um, director Ridley Scott, um, he was approached to direct Gladiator and they brought the script to him. And then alongside the script, they brought this painting, but they brought a life-size reproduction, which is like fucking huge. And Ridley Scott like just sh shooed away the script, saw the painting and went, I'll make it. Like he just looked at the thing and went, if I, I need this, this image needs to be brought to the screen. And you have that shot in the film, don't you? Like, you know, Russell Crowe in the gladiatorial arenas looking up to like, you know, the sea of people. Just like jeering and booing and like, ooh, kill him, kill him. Stab some more tigers. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? And so he didn't even want to look at the scripts when I'll direct this film. And then he read the scripts. Oh, it's pretty good. But we'll have to take some stuff out, such as Russell Crowe shilling, because that's <laughs> not realistic, even though it is. Shilling for Gillette. <laughs> but, uh, you know. That's Shadow Legends. <laughs> that'd be amazing. <laughs> It's like he's about to stab the guy. Before I stab this guy, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. That's, that, that's so good. Do you remember when we talked like, about if like Robocop was on Twitch? Yeah. We talked about it after like box KSI and shit, and we just lost it. Like that film contains that, I mean, it helped popularize the idea that um, in the Gladiatorial Arena, thumbs down 
meant you kill someone. Thumbs up means they get saved, right? That is a really popular misconception and have you any idea what the actual truth is? It's like sometimes you'll see like lesser fact websites say, well actually it's the other way around because the meaning of the thumbs up and the thumbs down has um, uh, changed in like over time. I'd make the assumption that like slaves at this point are property. So why would you kill them after every fight? But no, they did do this in the arena, but they didn't do a thumbs up or a thumbs down to indicate like save kill. What they did instead was a thumb in any direction meant kill which is what the painting is depicting. And to save someone, you did this. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Like if you're looking at a crowd of a thousand people, it's really difficult to tell if their thumb is up or down, but you can tell if their thumb is out. And if anyone curious, like, well, what's the meaning behind this? The general consensus from historians and scholars is that the thumb up or down is like stab. It's the stabbing motion, like, you know, deliver the coup de grace. Whereas putting your thumb inside your fist is stay your weapon. You know, sheathe your weapon, let them live. It's like, or punch them instead. No, yeah, just knock them the fuck out. Yeah, just play rock, paper, scissors with somebody across the way. <laughs> so, like, generally that's, like, what they think it is. It's like, they did used to do this, but it wasn't thumbs up, thumbs down. It was thumb or thumb in. I feel like it would still be hard to see the thumb. But it's a lot easier to tell. Like, you see a crowd of fists in the air with thumbs up, it's a lot easier to tell. You can... And the thing is, it's the emperor, isn't it? Or the person in charge, like, they're just going to eyeball it and guess. And if they're wrong, it's like... I'd have thought, like, fist or th all fingers out would be a bit more... It would be. You know what? Go back in time and correct her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, Carl. I'm sorry. You know what, Brad? It's a movie. <laughs> but, like, that's what the painting was depicting. But Ridley Scott, like a lot of people, just was under the assumption that it was thumbs up and thumbs down. Like, you're applying our um, understanding of what a thumbs up and a thumbs down means to, like, this historical practice, which wasn't the case. Like I say, it was stay your thumb or thumb out. And uh, you know, that made it into the movie, and just even to this day, you'll have people just say, Oh, yeah, thumbs up for killing, like, uh, thumbs up for survive, like thumbs down for that. And that's what you see in the movie, that way he goes, like, and he goes, Boo! For kill. Yeah. Yeah, you get it, you get it. Yeah, no. Well, no, that's no, like, you know, it's yeah. a, an, an, interest, an interesting double fact for us there, yes, isn't it? Audience, are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> are you not entertained? I still think though that throw that he does when he throws that sword is fucking legendary. Oh. I need to talk about okay. the the YouTube thing that we all we've all watched mm -hmm. it. The thing that's like the ten hour. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius Maximus Meridius Decimus Maximus Meridius Maximus. We, I think there was once there was a party that we were all at and I put it on in the background and left it. Yeah. And it was like three hours Maximus Decimus Maximus Meridius Maximus Decimus Meridius. One that I like is I rewatch Gladiator every year. It's just one of those movies that it never gets old. It's about. fantastic. And like that first like battle scene where he just says like, does anyone, has anyone been in the army before? And some guy in the background was like, a decent I missed for years. And like, I fought with you on this battlefield. And the guy never like outed him. But like just instant respect. Like they immediately fall in line. It's like, you know, this guy will fucking save your life. Like if you listen to him, your chance of survival go up by like a million percent. And like just that battle scene we have like um, against the barbarian horde, isn't it? It's like, correct me again, like tell me again, who won this battle? It's like the barbarian's like, Way! And the movie inadvertently resulted in a number of things, such as the popularization of that misconception, which like, you know, you know. You can't really blame people for that, can you? It's like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess. When it explains you thumbs up, thumbs down, it makes sense. You don't really do any research on it, even though they had like historians on set who probably could have corrected them. But I guess, I think they did know about it when they were making the film, but they included it because the misconception is so popular. It's like one of those ways you can translate it to a modern audience. Like you mentioned earlier, off, it's not exactly how it would have gone down, but... This is just a visual shorthand that the audience will understand. It also looks visually interesting. Yeah, if you like, it's like thumb. Ho hovering thumb. Like that, that image is burning in my mind of yeah. like, which way is he going. So everybody watching, if you like the video, you give us a thumbs up as well. well you, can, you can't give us no thumbs down anymore. You're not allowed to do that anymore. You can, but it's, you can give us a middle thumb. Can we even see sure. those? We, we can <laughs> see them. The audience can't. I've always been curious, like, because I never check. Like, it's a completely... Because I remember when that change came into effect and loads of people were mad as if anyone gives a fuck. Like, here's a pro tip, we never give it, we never check that analytic, it is completely valueless. It doesn't do anything analytics-wise. If anyone's interested, most of them are like between 98 and 99%, apart from one way we talk about like weird men online. Yeah. They, those ones go down a bit. By about like 1%, yeah, which, which, is, which, which shows how little impact <laughs> they really have, which is very funny. But anyway, you know, it popularized that, and also brought people to talk about ancient Rome, which is apparently a thing online at the moment. 
of like, you have girls on TikTok going, yeah, ask your boyfriend if he thinks about ancient Rome and the guy's like, yeah, all the time. Like, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? Like, Every what? day. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I, I looked it up because I was, I was so curious. I kept hearing it everywhere. Like somebody asked um, Ryan Bagara from Ghost Files, somebody asked him at a convention and he was like, uh, I guess I think about it once a month, maybe. <laughs> um, the only thing I ever sure. think about is the um, that formation they do where they just become like a square. Oh, the, the Testudo or Tortudo yeah, the, or something. Yeah, the Testudo formation where it's like the big square because when I, a really, really early, early article on Fact Fiend, that we did, that probably never gonna do because it's like before we change the style to be more comedic, is like they used to use that to make bridges. Oh. So they used to like, join armies were marching. They would just, if there was like a ravine, they would get their men to do the Tessudo formation in there. I guess they link them all up and it does take a lot of the weight off. Yeah, yeah Minecraft. March across really, it. It's on subject. Minecraft recently done an update where when you turn, the shield moves with you. And the top comment was, we can finally do the Russian formation. <laughs> What's well, like when you watch like um, Gladiator, they do that, don't they? Like when they form like the the circle of like dominance, or like my favourite one that is in three hundred, where you just have Leonidas in front of the orb, <laughs> the, the orb of like Sparta, which always cracked me up as a visual. He stands there, and behind him is just this perfect golden circle with all the Spartans inside. This movie led to a direct increase in people buying books about the Roman Empire. So people are like, wow, this is awesome. I want to read more about this, like, time period. Then you could just go to, like, any museum, I guess. And see, well, yeah, that's that's the oh, idea. library. I'm sure there's loads of books in the library. I can't remember the last time I went to a library. Are there still libraries? I think yeah. so, yeah. I've got a library card. I go all the time. Do you actually? Yeah, because, oh. like, for reference books, I read reference books. Oh, I suppose it makes sense. For yeah. facts and stuff. So it's just, like, they cost me a lot of money to get reference books. So I guess I can give people a pro tip for this, like people ask, where do you find a lot of your information? It's like, most of the times I need to remind myself stuff I learn in school. I do those like basic things that you know that you know, but you need a refresher. So I get like a lot of reference books. So I remember I had a, um, I was on a podcast with like Simon Whistler once, and I talked about the ideas. I don't know if I came up with it, but I called being a temporary expert. And it's like, so how do you write about a subject like, you know, ancient Rome? Like if you're gonna write a specific article, because I've written blown new articles about it. Well, first thing I do, I say, you get a children's book because children's books are written to basically give you the absolute most basic grounding in this. They are written with the intention of someone who has no clue about what any of this stuff is about. So they give you the most like fundamental grounding you're gonna get for this. And then obviously, then you move on to like the uh, the more dense and uh, like scholarly stuff. Because I, I I keep looking at like looking at the other day actually like books. To re to like re-educate myself with like science and history and stuff because when I was in school, I just wasn't really interested and I forgotten it all and it's like now I'm more interested in it and it's like I should know these things but I don't remember them and I kind of want to refresh myself. Yeah, it's good. It's never sorts of it's never a bad thing to like educate yourself and I know there's so many someone out there who's thinking like oh school doesn't teach you important stuff it's like it does and like there's a really great um. Uh, like breakdown of it out there. Like, do you know people say, "Oh, why don't they teach you how to like, you know, cook and clean and stuff?" Which they do. It's called like home economics. And most of the people who moan about that are weird men online, and they don't want to do those classes because they think they're gay. It's like they did teach you that stuff. It's like, oh, they never teach you how to do your taxes. They do. They teach you maths. You didn't pay attention. Like, oh, they don't teach you how to do this. Like, they do. It's like it's the application of knowledge. Like, you already have the knowledge. You just need to apply it to this situation, which school does teach you if you pay attention. Do we apply algebra to anything, though? Well, I guess, yeah. Like, basic mathematics. You kind of do, in a way. It's just very minimal. Like, it's just because it's always that like joke, isn't it? It's yeah. like, oh, we learn to teach us how to do taxes. No, I've never had to teach us algebra. Then. I think we turn, like, brackets into a big sum. I've never had to do that. But the thing is, though, it's like to to not be taught that would basically like, yeah, it's a it's one of the things it's the fundamental building block of the universe in which we live and like whenever I see people like uh, like basically advocating for like more vocational courses for kids it's like well that's just really depressing right it's like you want to give kids like the biggest grounding possible academically because they might not be interested in it but you're basically advocating for people to be uneducated like vocational skills can be learned later in life but like. That when you're at that age where your brain is a sponge, you want kids to be able to absorb as much knowledge about the world in which they live as possible. Because otherwise, it'd be just like, it'd be, that's it's such a depressing thought, isn't it? Of like, why don't they teach kids like how to like, you know, apply, like applicable life skills? Like, well, they do. They teach them the social curriculum, I think it's called, of like, you know, interacting with others, which is more important realistically than anything else, because how many arseholes do we have today? 
I think people often dismiss the secondary skills you get through doing things like you, you, you learn maths, but you might also learn how to do stuff in the background or like in history, you learn how to research, you learn where to look in books, you learn... Yeah, it's... Well, the one that always annoys me is that people make fun of the social sciences, like, like sociology, like media studies, which I studied at university. Like, you know, um, uh, like women's studies is one that people make fun of. It's like, well, that's 50% of the world's population. How is it, a, like, how is it not valuable? Because I remember there's a really, really great Ask Reddit thread out there where it's like, what is the most useless degree? And obviously you saw by controversial women's studies, women's studies, women's studies, women's studies. All the comments of people who actually got those degrees, like, basically every degree is valuable. And the ones that people dismiss as not being valuable, like, you know, women's studies. It's like, what's, how is that going to help you get a job? It's like, well, 50 per, 51% of the population are women. Companies want to make their products to sell to women. They have entire teams of people that they have specifically to how do we attract more women to this business, this industry, sell our product to. That degree has incredible value to those and they are like six, seven figure jobs. Same like sociology of like a better understanding of the world in which we live. How is that not going to be valuable to a company? Yeah, I did sociology in, in college. Yeah. I don't remember too much of it, but it's just specific parts. Like I always remember the nuclear family. It's like two parents, two kids. It's like the average sort of nuclear family. That's like the ideal in society. But well, just to learn more about the world in which we live and understand why things are the way that they are. Because like, how many times do you have people online say, I don't understand this? It's like, well, learn more about it then. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I always found out that if, um, Lucas, you can put a link to that Ask Reddit thread if you can find it. Cause it's fascinating to read through, like, people have, like, they'll say what their degree is and how it applies to their field. And it's ways you never, like, think of. Like, people who have, like, sociology degrees are like, well, my degree is basically how to communicate with people, which is so critical to all business anywhere on Earth. It's so valuable. If you had to pick one, what would you say is a, is a less useful degree of interest? Yeah. Would it be something hyper specific, like? No, because the more specific it is, the more specific that it is, the more value it probably has in that very specific field. It's like it was a, I think it's a Saturday morning breakfast cereal comic, where it's like it basically makes fun of this concept. As a kid going, well, will any of us ever actually use algebra? And the teacher says, you won't, but the smart kids might. And is that like the more specific it is, so like it, the more valuable it is to that field. So I think just something very broad that doesn't delve into the nitty gritty, especially at a degree level. Maybe a broad one that's got another one that would be better than it, I guess. Well, like my degree is technically in media and communication studies, which like is very broad. And my specialization was in, uh, I did like you know, modules we have over here, I guess in America would be like minors. So my modules were in uh, media deconstruction and uh, women's studies. So that's one of those things like, well, I 51% of why would like, you know, it's literally a perspective I've never had. I would like to learn more about this. Which I guess there's guys out there that'll make fun of that. And it's like, well, I get laid and you don't. So <laughs> deal with it. Might have been the right thing What's to like, What about your course? courses? Like you did film and visual effects, both of you, right? But I guess you specialize after that. Like during your course, you get to pick a path through, don't you? It was a really bad course. <laughs> I mean, you, uh, could pick, you could pick certain like modules, terms, like we did. One, there was one that was sound related. You could pick, which we like, definitely film, need, the, like film theory. But you'd only do it for like three months, and that was it. So it's not yeah, very in depth. There's so many parts of my course I would have loved to have done like a full three years on. Like when I was doing about film theory and the idea of like, um, oh, this is how films are, like the idea that media can have an influence on people, on the way media is constructed. And, like the, the term that I've learned, and I've never forgotten, and is useful literally every single day. Is the, word, is the weasel words. Are you familiar with the term weasel words? No. So weasel words, it's when I was like, uh, one of my modules was um, uh, journalism, specifically headline writing, which I'm, I like to think I'm very good at, like all the titles I write online, but they, I got introduced to the concept of weasel words, which are words that you wouldn't notice, but they, like, they impart a sort of agenda. So, for example, you'll see a headline of something like, you know, let's get the, the actual technical definition up because I, like, this is half remembered. I, I know it, but I can't explain it. So, so the, the technical definition is a weasel word and a phrase uh, are qualifiers to create enough wiggle room for, like, you know, doubt. And it's, they give off a sense of authority when it is not earned. So a weasel word is like might. So it's like, oh, this uh, new treatment might help with aging, might cure cancer. And it's like, well, it might. You can say about anything. And it's, it conveys a sense of authority, or, you know, on the subject at the very least. But 
that's not the case. Or the other one I learned is if any ju if any headline um, ends with a question mark, the answer is no. It's like, ooh, could this new product help stop this? No. I could talk about this all day, and I and I have done before. Let's talk about our shirt that I'm wearing right now. This is our new bit of merch, the Sage of Secrets, designed by Baby Senpai, artist links below. Like they've done some sick awesome artwork and worn the t-shirts in the past. This is Nisha, you've been like spearheading this one behind the scenes, yes? Yeah, I've been in contact with Psycho and Baby Senpai, just basically getting the artwork sorted, ready for printing. It's been quite a long process. It has. Like, definitely worth it. Three, four months. I think the artwork is absolutely sick as balls. So yes, um, if you would like to pre-order this shirt, it's up for pre-sale right now. Uh, in addition to getting the t-shirt itself, you'll also get like a little business card. And we're in the process of like finalizing the design on that, which will contain a QR code, which will link to um, like you're going to throw these together over the next couple of days. Yes. Yeah. Like so wallpapers. Basically, like yeah, digital versions of the artwork, which you'd be able to use on your phones. Yeah. And stuff like that and print them off. Because the thing that's happened in the past when we have these like t-shirt launches, I like that artwork. Is there any way to just get the artwork itself? It's like in this way, you can. You can have a background for your phone, your computers, your laptops, your TVs. I bet your bed spread if you want. I guess. So we'll see. Well, Shower curtain. <laughs> That's always a really funny one. I'm like, you'd see on Red, Red Bubble, Bubble, Red yeah. Bubble, just a shower curtain. I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to go into Red Bubble because, like, so many stores on Red Bubble just rip off our stuff. I've always wanted to take a screenshot of the people ripping off our stuff and put that on a shirt and sell it. <laughs> and then wear it in a video just to see if they dare fucking send me a cease and desist. But yeah, if you want to, like, you know, like support the channel, get a sick, awesome piece of artwork, um, like, you know, you can go to the pre sale link below. You can also, like, follow the artists as well because they've been. Very, very um, uh, active in pursuit. Like every couple of days, I got a message. You launched the shirt yet? It's like, no, no. It's like, you know, the wheels move slowly behind the scenes. We'll let you know when we do. Yeah, we'll she's let you know very, when we do. Very excited. About she's it, very though. excited, yeah. So follow Baby Senpai on Twitter. And like, she also sells shirts. They're all incredible. Like, you know, follow her, buy her stuff. Like, you know, just cannot thank her enough for like, the work she's done. I think, I mean, cut this out if it's wrong. You can double check, but I think she did some like designs for Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm pretty sure she did. Well, she's yeah, she's got all sorts of stuff, yeah, and it's like mostly anime inspired. And if anyone's wondering, well, what is the design? If anyone curious, like we have our our logo, the Fact Fiend. We've had it redesigned a couple of times for like similar deals and like pre-sale stuff of the Knowledge Demon, which is like you know an Oni holding like a big scroll. Like, he's, he's protecting that knowledge. We have the Keeper of the Forbidden Secrets, which is a D and D inspired monster. It's like you know. A, basically an eyeball made of books that hoards all the knowledge and that came with like a D&D monster card you can use in an actual game and this one is the Sage of Secrets which is an anime inspired design because they do anime inspired artwork um, and the prompt that I gave them was um, draw my logo with big tits and that's exactly what they did and they you know what delivered delivered <laughs>